subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update join the only official telegram channel of rao's ie study circle to get relevant material and important updates dear students we have a very important announcement for you if you are looking for guidance for optional program rao's ie's bangalore center is conducting its optional counseling on 24th of july this will basically be talking about four optional subjects geography public administration history and sociology so please note the time and there is a link in the description which you can utilize for the purpose of registering for these sessions now as far as these sessions are concerned optional orientation for geography will be taken by indrajit sir and this will be conducted on sunday 24th of july 10 am now these optional orientations are live online and you can attend these sessions online next is public administration this will be taken by anubhav sharma sir and the sessions timing are sunday 24th of july 12:30 pm onwards next is history which will be taught by parampreet sir the optional orientation will be taken on sunday 24th of july from 3 pm onwards and sociology will be taught by mr vikram kaushal again on sunday 24th of july from 5:30 pm onwards so if you are someone who is looking forward for optional orientation in these subjects these sessions are must attend for you do not miss them enroll for these sessions through the link in the description hello everyone and welcome to daily news simplified your one stop solution to detailed analysis of current affairs which are published in the daily edition of the hindu newspaper articles dated 16th of july 2022 are listed on your screen and the time stamping for these article is already given in the description box So let us begin with the first article for the day. This article appeared on page 1st of the Delhi edition Hindu newspaper and talks about the recent observation made by a important national level framework ranking which is published by the Ministry of Education for higher educational institutions in the country. As per the National Institutional Ranking Framework NIRF and its 7th edition indian institute of madras has yet again top the higher educational institutions ranking in the country followed by indian institute of sciences bengaluru and iit bombay this was released by ministry of education yesterday now from the perspective of upsc examination we should have the basic understanding of such kind of rankings and the institutions that publishes such kind of ranking in the public domain so from that perspective we will look into what is nirf what are the basic parameters and the basic performance this ranking framework was started by ministry of human resource and development which is currently known by the name ministry of education in 2015 september so this was the 7th edition from that regard The framework actually outlines the methodology for the ranking of institutions across the country but only the higher educational institutions and not the school education. It draws overall recommendation based on a core committee recommendation which is set up by the Ministry of Education and this core committee actually goes through five important parameters to go for the right evaluation and performance of higher educational institutions across india well these are the five broad based conditions or parameters on the basis of which a particular institution is awarded a rank in the list so these five important parameters are teaching learning and resources research and professional practices in the institution graduation outcome outreach and inclusivity of the students and the perception or the popular perception with respect to that particular institutions among the people the best feature of this ranking system is that it allow the regional diversity outreach gender equity as well as inclusion of disadvantaged sections while calculating their ranking method the committee has also used various outsourcing of data and third party resources in order to calculate the rank this also include the publications retrieved from scopus and web of sciences from international standards 
and these publications and citations have been used to calculate the specific rank of an institution. As far as classification or the category of a specific domain is concerned, so the ranking provide different institutions based on these important 10 parameters or categories for their overall ranking. The top category is the overall ranking based on the different subjects or the collection or the basket of subjects and the domain. Then we have the ranking based on university wise and even in this we have different rankings for engineering, management, different colleges, undergraduate colleges, pharmacy, colleges based for medical education, architecture, law and dental. The overall humanity based or science related subject or the basket of subject comes under the first heading. Now the question is why government of India is calculating such kind of ranking system in Indian education system. The point being simple that India wants to have better guidance for the students to decide for the type of educational institution they want to pursue their career. Such kind of ranking system also have the universities to improve their performance over the past benchmarks. It also helped them to identify the gaps in the research and different area of improvements are open for these educational institutions. And in last, such ranking also provide transparency and the healthy competition to higher education system in the country, which is actually going through many hurdles as of now. With this discussion place, now I will leave you with this question to practice. So read this question carefully and try to answer in the comment box. Let us now move to the next article for the day. This article of the Hindu newspaper appeared on page 6 that is the editorial page and talks about the deficit doubts with respect to India's external trade. Now India's current account deficit that is export minus import has widened to a larger extent as import bill has surpassed its previous limits over the low growth of exports. Now the relevance of this topic is straightforward in your GS paper 3 in the mains examination deficit related terms could be asked or a budgeting related question could be put up in the economic section. As far as prelim examination is concerned so basic economic terms their phenomena and trend is important for you. Now what does article has to offer? Article has to say that as per the ministry of finance microeconomic risk have subsided over the past one month. Now government is optimistic with respect to the macroeconomic indicators and government is suggesting from the reference of Ministry of Finance that India's economic recovery is taking place and all these are evident from the initiatives which were taken by the government. So why India is registering a positive outlook with respect to economic development, the reasons are as follows. The first one is the interest hikes in which Reserve Bank of India that is the central bank has taken initiative to increase basic lending rates in the country. There has been a curtail on the outflow of dollars and these curtails have also led to the controlling of excessive depreciation in the Indian rupee. Government has also imposed the windfall taxes on the riches that has helped to gain the revenue earning and also implement the same for the capital expenditure. Government has also increased the import duties on certain goods in order to reduce the excessive import bill on government exchequer. Government has also cut down the excise duty on the petroleum product so that it can be easy on the pockets of common man and will also reduce down the inflationary pressure. And lastly, the industrial prices, food prices and the fuel prices in the last 3-4 weeks have been pacified given what was going on the weeks before that. However, still there are numerous concerns which are associated and lined up in front of government. The first one is that India's current account deficit is extremely high. It has already crossed 2% of the GDP. Apart from that, India is also going through the slowing down of the exports because the international demand has already been hit by the Ukraine-Russia war 
it has already been hit by the low demand of the western countries that is developed nations in europe and america on the other hand india has a very inelastic import of oil and whenever we have such kind of situation any increase in the price of oil will always cost india the costlier deal and lastly there is an excessive depreciation on indian rupee and given the inelastic imports import bill is likely to be higher in the next quarter also now what does government is planning in this regard government along with the ministry of finance has decided to attack the inflationary pressure on the individuals from item to item basis now what usually government do is that they try to impose the restrictive norms such as higher interest rate higher lending rates lower expenditure as well as the control through the taxation but all these policy may impact those goods where people have in elastic demand or where the demand cannot be compromised so government this time is deciding to attack the inflationary caused by different or specific items so they will now attack those items which are not as a necessity to the people and they are also responsible for causing the inflation or the higher import bill the most important one out of these would be the gold imports by india so these are the important component of current account deficit now balance of payment has two important components the first one being your current account in which those items are included where transaction and exchange remains less than 1 year then we have the capital account in which transactions and exchange remains more than a year so in current account we have two important division the first one is visible the second one is invisible in visible we have important goods that is merchandise in this india is going through the deficit stage on invisible we have three important categories the first one being services followed by income and transfers in service sector we are at the surplus so india has been exporting more services than what india is importing on income front we have earnings such as profit interest and dividend here india is going through the deficit because of the large number of multinational corporations then we have the transfer payments it includes the remittances donations scholarships gifts and others in this india is in surplus stage the most important one being the remittances coming to india now apart from current account other component of the balance of payment is the capital account in which we have three categories the first one being the investment followed by loan and nri account in investment we have foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment here india is on the surplus stage then we have the loans where we have the sovereign borrowings and the commercial borrowings by different commercial entities here also india shows a quite higher level of surplus and then we have nri accounts or non resident indian accounts which includes remittances donations gifts here also india is on the surplus stage now the point is india's capital account shows overall a surplus status and india's current account shows overall a deficit status but the point is that current account has remained more vis-a-vis -vis the capital account and this is the reason why india shows overall negative balance of payment which india has to balance with other accommodative accounts now if we go through the past 10 years trend you'll find that it was just a case of 2020 when india's deficit was minimum otherwise india has reached even up to minus 5% of gdp with respect to its current account deficit now these initial stages of 2011 to 12 was a phase of recession in india where the inflation was extremely high demand was low india's export was low but import were very high so that was the reason and that was a stage when india's current account deficit was at its lowest position with this discussion please let us now move to the next article for the day this article appeared on page 8 of delhi edition hindu newspaper and talks about an important modern indian historical personality of vinayak damodar sarvarkar 
Now recently the National Memorial and Museum which was dedicated which is dedicated to Mahatma Gandhi has brought out an special edition of their monthly magazine which is solemnly dedicated towards the Hindutva leader Vinayak Damodar Sarvarkar. Now from the perspective of UPSC preparation it is important for the student for their prelims as well as means examination to study about important personalities of modern India. Now keeping that relevance in mind let us talk about the information which is factual with respect to VD Savarkar. He was born in 1883 in Nasik Maharashtra and laid the foundation of Abhinav Bharat society and this society initially called as Mitra Mela which was founded by him in 1899. Abhinav Bharat Society was founded by Sarvakar along with his brother in 1904. It was a secret society, so do not get confused with this term. It was a secret society which led to the rise of nationalism along the Indians even in London, that is outside India. He was also associated with India House, an organization which was created by Shamji Krishna Verma in London to promote the nationalist idea among Indian youth or the educated class of Indian youth living in London. He went to London in 1906 and soon founded the Free India Society over there along with Madam Bikaji Kama. And this society was actually based on the ideology and thoughts of Italian nationalist Gosef Mazzini. He also acted as a president of Hindu Mahasabha between 1937 to 1943 in the same time when Hindu Mahasabha actually did not participate in Quit India movement along with other institutions such as Muslim League. He was convicted for the sentence of 50 years rigorous imprisonment in Kalapani that is the cellular jail of Andaman and Nicobar. However, he was released in 1924. He also joined the Tilak Swaraj party and believed in the complete independence. He advocated Hindi as a national language and should be adopted in that and he also fought against the cause of untouchability as well as the caste based discrimination within the Hindu society. As far as literary works are concerned, so these are the following. He wrote the history of war of Indian independence that is the revolt of 1857. He also wrote on Hindutva, who is a Hindu, and he also wrote one of the biography of Mazini, to whom he was a great follower. With this discussion placed, now I will leave you a practice question with respect to V.D. Savarkar. So read this question carefully and try to answer in the comment box. Let us now move to the next article for the day. This article appeared in this article appeared on page 12 that is the business page of the Hindu newspaper and talks about the increasing public capital expenditure which according to the finance minister is going to be the plan of, of the government in long term growth. Now government has raised, government has called for extensive public expenditure to revive the Indian economy after covid crisis. Now the relevance of this topic is manifold. In terms of paper 3 of your general studies means examination, it can be asked under the headings of planning, mobilization of financial resources, growth related factors, development related factors and employment related factors. It can also be part of inclusive growth and the issues arising from it. It is part of your capital budgeting, hence can also be asked under government budgeting. And lastly, it can also be asked under the different investment models highlighting the role of government. Now from the perspective of government side, government has increased the capital expenditure from 5.5 lakh crore to 7.5 lakh crore in the budget recently that is 35.4% hike over and above what was required. And this is to fight the setbacks of COVID-19. Now, a jump of 35.4% is unprecedented in India. India. Indian government has never seen such a high growth of capital expenditure in a small, in a very small period of time in previous years. Now, from the perspective of UPSC, we should know certain basic terms and also the important trend of capital expenditure of the government in the past few years. 
Now, as far as budgeting is concerned, so you must be well aware that the budget is classified into revenue budget and capital budget. Capital budget consists of the capital receipts as well as the payments or the expenditure. It also incorporates the transaction in the public account of India. Now, as far as public receipts are concerned, they include the loans raised by the government from the public, that is the market loans. Borrowings by the government from RBI and other parties through the sale of treasury bills. Loan taken by the government from foreign bodies or the other governments. And the recoveries that government has incurred through the loan granted by the different states or the union territories or even the PSUs. As far as capital payment or expenditure is concerned, which is the highlight of the article, it means the expenditure put forward for the acquisition of assets like land, buildings, machineries or even the equipments. So the money which government is spending on building something or building a road or constructing a road or a national highway, flyovers, railways will come under the capital expenditure. It also in includes the investment in terms of share, loan, advances granted by the central government to states, union territories or the public sector undertakings. So if tomorrow central government plans to expand the Indian Oil Corporation or when the central government try to impose more money in National Highway Authority of India to construct the capital assets in the country, it will form part of capital expenditure. Now, government has increased the capital expenditure by 34.5% in the year. It simply means that it is going to have the multiplier impact on the economic growth of India in the coming years. Now, as far as basic trend is concerned, so this is how we will going to analyze this. As you can see in the last 14 years, that is financial year 2008 to financial year 2022. What we have seen is the overall expenditure of the government has increased by over 380% in 14 years. And since 2017, as you can see, the capital expenditure has just doubled. So in just five years, the overall capital expenditure of the government has just doubled. And it was not seen in a similar manner in the years before that. Now, as far as budget share allocation is concerned, it has remained fluctuating. So it was as high as 18% in 2008 financial year. On the other hand, it was reduced down to less than 4% in 2010. The reason was the global economic crisis. And since then, till 2021, it has been between 4 to 5%. And this year, it has expanded to 15.9%. However, it is not even close to what it had in 2008. So what we have seen that since global crisis of 2009-10, Indian budget allocation towards capital expenditure has remained more or less similar. Now coming to the basic issue. So the first issue with respect to the capital expenditure is that most of the capital expenditure is done in last four to five months so from the perspective of allocation between april to november that is first eight to nine months what we see is that government normally spend only 50 percent of its total capital expenditure so first eight months only 50 percent and rest four months goes with other 50 percent and sometimes the capital expenditure is not spent completely so this is the important issue with respect to the capital expenditure. Government has to go with equitable distribution of its capital expenditure all across the year. The next issue is that when compared to the state capital expenditure, you can easily see that the red shaded portion shows the capital expenditure of the union government. And from this, what we come across is that the capital expenditure of the union government is quite low and it has always been smaller than that of the total expenditure of the center with respect to the revenue or the state with res respect to the revenue or capital spendings. So center's capital expenditure with respect to the total expenditure it has incurred has been quite low. So center government's spending on revenue expenditure is increasing far more than what capital expenditure should have increased. On the other slide, on the other graph, you can see 
that the capital expenditure as a percentage to GDP has been around 2% only, which is a very sorry state or very dismal state of performance from Indian government side. And this has been there since the last 10 years or even before that. As far as capital expenditure to the total expenditure is concerned. So there has been a consistency between 12 to 14% in last 10 years except the last one financial year where it has increased drastically. So as far as capital expenditure is concerned, so what we have seen till now is that overall capital expenditure has increased but its ratio to the total expenditure or its ratio to the overall GDP has remained very low. Not only that, the capital expenditure made by the union government is far below with performance to the state capital expenditure. And lastly, the capital expenditure of the union government has not been that efficient which can increase the GDP to the higher extent. With this discussion in place, now I will leave you with this question to practice on the topic that we have just discussed. So read this question carefully and try to answer in the comment box. Let us now move to the last article for the day. This article appeared on page 5th of the Hindu newspaper and talks about the rise of monkeypox case in the state of Kerala where the government has put the entire governance under high alert. One patient in Kerala has shown the symptoms of monkeypox and 16 people who came in contact to that person are under watch list. Now from the perspective of prelim examination, monkeypox becomes important. So today we are going to discuss about different facets and features of this monkeypox disease. This is an infectious and communicable disease. So it can easily transfer from one person to the other. It is based on the DNA virus unlike the HIV which is based on the RNA virus. It belongs to the pox virus family such as chicken pox, small pox and others. And it is part of ortho pox virus. Historically, monkey pox was first identified in 1958 in the laboratory of Copenhagen, Denmark. And the first case of human transmission was observed in 1970 in Congo. The detection of the disease is straightforward as it is a skin disease. It can easily be visible after the showing of symptoms or before that PCR which is a polymerase chain reaction also used for the COVID-19 detection. This PCR test can also be used for the detection of this virus. The incubation period that is a time taken from exposure to the onset of the symptoms is usually 7 to 14 days. The duration of the disease lasts for 2 to 4 weeks. So the symptoms, the skin infection can last for up to 28 days after which it is likely that the symptoms of the disease will be vanished. The medium of the spread remains the handling of bushmeat, animal bite or the scratch of the infected animal, transfer of body fluids, contaminated objects and their uses and close contact with the infected person, skin to skin contact most probably. Maybe a handshake or a hug might be the reason. The contrasting feature of monkey pox with that of chicken pox and small pox is that it has a swollen gland which is not found in chicken pox and the small pox diseases. The prevention as of now is not available. So what scientists and the doctors are relying is the utilization of the smallpox vaccine. However, smallpox has already been eradicated across the globe. So countries, especially the poor countries do not have smallpox vaccine right now. But the rich countries like United States and European nations have ac access for the generation of new smallpox vaccine which can be utilized for the prevention of this disease but only at 85% effectiveness. Now the point is why this disease has become such a concern now. The cases of community spread are rising in UK and no death has been reported by now. So from the perspective of casualty this is not a big concern but Community spread remains one of the biggest concern of this disease right now. The relief is that there is no major case found in South Asia, especially in India. And countries 
specifically the european nations have imposed the travel restrictions from and to african continent this article of the hindu newspaper appeared on page 11 and talks about the new entrance as a member of iran and belarus in the shanghai cooperation organization now iran and belarus are going to be the two newest member to join the china russia backed shanghai cooperation organization grouping the relevance of this article comes from the fact that such kind of international organizations are important for you to prepare for your prelim examination as well as the mains examination so today we are going to discuss about the shanghai cooperation organization its historical background and how this organization is relevant for india as far as membership is concerned so as you can see these are the shaded eight members of shanghai cooperation organization which was created as a china led institutions or a global organization with special focus towards economic and security india and pakistan joined in 2017 and the founding member of the organization were china russia kazakhstan kyrgyzstan tajikistan and uzbekistan as far as objectives of this organization is concerned so the top most important component of this organization is regional anti terrorist structure or reds which is a permanent body stationed or headquartered at tashkent uzbekistan one of the member of sco the basic objective of this organization is to combat terrorism separatism and extremism the organization also calls for mutual trust and neighborliness in treatment with all its members cooperation in the field of politics trade economy research technology culture education energy transportation tourism environmental protections and others to be specific if you can notice that these are the important elements of strategic partnership in international domain it also calls for ensuring the peace security and stability which comes from the mandate of reds in seo as far as relevance of seo for india is concerned well these are the following the first one is the energy security central asian region is highly endowed with energy resources such as oil and natural gas which india is trying to gain access through the chabar port or international north south trade corridor as far as economic growth is concerned so Shanghai Corporation Organization has a high economic potential with 40% of world's population 22% of global gdp and this is about to get up to 40% by 2025 as far as security cooperation is concerned so we have already talked about an important component of seo that is reds which is viewed by india as a platform to access intelligent information gathering and sharing as well as a solution for the regional security cooperation especially in the case of drug trafficking from the areas of golden crescent when we talk about the gateway of eurasia india's membership to seo is an opportunity for india to engage with the eurasian economic union thereby the eurasian market This platform provides India the engagement engagement chances to Pakistan and China the nations with which India have the bitter historical relations It is yet another opening such as BRICS where India and China can share and bring their tensions down in every consecutive meeting For Pakistan in the absence of SARC summit SCO provides the best opportunity for India and Pakistani leaders to meet informally and on the sidelines to engage in the anti-terrorism cooperation. As far as connectivity is concerned, so yes, SCO is a potential platform for advancing India's connect to the Central Asia as well as beyond it up to European Union. On the enhanced status SCO membership also provide India's status as a major pan Asian player which is boxed in the south asian paradigm and lastly when it comes to the value alignment yes 
The Shanghai spirit emphasizes on harmony, non-interference in others' internal affairs, and non-alignment values that India has always cherished and upheld. Now, as far as challenges to SEO are concerned from the Indian perspective, these are as follows. The first one is the dominance of China and Russia in SEO. As both of them are the co-founder of SEO, they have the dominant power in the grouping, thus limit India's ability to assert itself. China's Belt and Road Initiative has taken inroads into the Central Asian economy. India, on the other hand, has opposed China's BRI initiative as well as its presence in Pakistan with respect to CPEC. India and Pakistan are age-old rivals. It is difficult for them to adhere the idea of good neighborliness, which is inscribed in the Article 1 of SEO. India recently also walked out of the National Security Advisors meeting in this organization after Pakistan presented the fictitious map of India. Then comes the definition of terrorism. Well, India does not stand by the definition which is given by SEO under RETS. For SEO, terrorists coincide or sync with the regime such as destabilization. Whereas for India, it is a state-sponsored cross-border terrorism that is mostly related. With this discussion, please, now I will leave you with question of the day. The answer to yesterday's question was option A, that is, as far as counter-cyclical fiscal policies are concerned, this policy is normally adopted to promote the economic growth when the economy is facing recession. As far as second statement is concerned, which is wrong statement, in this policy, we do not always focus on increasing the monetary policy. It may also be the other case around. The question for today, that is 16th of July, is which of the following events will impact the quantity of foreign currency in India? Now, impact here means both increase and decrease. So, read the question carefully, all the options, and try to answer in the comment box. That's all for today's Daily News Simplify. Thank you.